This is Dr. Jockers, and today we're talking about 10 surprising benefits of magnesium for your health. We know that magnesium is to the body what oil is to a car. What does that mean? That means that we use magnesium literally for every metabolic function. It depends on magnesium. Every cell of the body uses magnesium on a regular basis. And magnesium is a key part of the actual electrical gradient of every cell. So without magnesium, we could we would cease to exist. Magnesium is so key, and yet most people, by 80% of our population, are deficient in magnesium. And really, even those people who are very health conscious, we're going to cycle between having enough and having too little magnesium throughout the day based on our stress levels, what our blood sugar is like, how much exercise we're doing. So really understanding the benefits of magnesium and how to support your magnesium levels is so critical for overall high energy, high performance, great mental function. And we'll go through all of that in detail in today's presentation. So if you don't know me, my name is Dr. David Jockers. I'm a doctor of natural medicine. I have a clinic in the Kennesaw, Georgia, just outside of Atlanta area called Exodus Health Center. And I speak all around the world and, and you know, top topic that, uh, that I'm a specialist in is energy, brain function, and the ketogenic diet. And magnesium is one of the tools I use to really help people improve their energy and their performance. This is my wife, Angel, my little boys, David and Joshua. And so as we go into the top 10 benefits of magnesium, we're going to see that magnesium is really an adaptogen. What does that mean? That means it helps our body adapt to the environment that we're in. So if we're during the daytime when the sun is out and we need energy, it's gonna help us with energy. We're gonna feel more energetic using magnesium. If it's in the evening time and we're preparing for sleep, it's going to help us sleep better. If we're under a lot of stress, it's gonna help us adapt to that stress better. If we are real tense, it's gonna help us relax that tension. So as you can see, I mean, it's just gonna help our body move towards homeostasis or balance. See, the body's always trying to be in balance or equilibrium. And really, ultimately, we want that balance or equilibrium to be a real high energetic state. Magnesium is going to help us get there. So again, if you're low on energy, it's going to help improve your energy. If you are trying to wind down but struggling to fall asleep at night, it's going to help you wind down and fall asleep more effectively. If you feel overwhelmed by stress, it's going to help you adapt better where you'll have better mental clarity and better stress adaptation. If you are constipated, it's going to help you move your bowels. It's going to help with bowel tone. So that's key. And really the cool thing is this, is that the only major side effect of too much magnesium is diarrhea. So if you take in too much magnesium, it will flush a whole bunch of water into your colon and you will have diarrhea. So that's really the, one of the signs you know that you've gotten too much magnesium. So if you have a non-infectious diarrhea, okay, and one way you'll know is um, typically if you have a bacterial related diarrhea, it's going to smell bad, okay? You're going to notice a, a bad smell with it. That is not magnesium related. That's related to too much of a certain type of bacteria, okay, where microorganisms, parasites could do it too. If you have just, in a sense, watery stools and you're doing high doses of magnesium, I would back down on the magnesium or even come off of it. But other than that, you're really just going to notice better energy, better stress adaptation, better sleep quality. And that's one of the great benefits of doing magnesium. And so here are signs that you may be magnesium deficient. Number one is you struggle with things like brain fog or ADHD, okay? So poor cognitive processing, classic sign of magnesium deficiency. If you have headaches or chronic migraines, classic sign, magnesium deficiency. It's one of the key things in my clinic. We have a lot of people in my chiropractic clinic coming in with, with uh, headaches, right? And so we put them on magnesium supplements and that along with chiropractic care can play, can play a great kind of complement to helping them overcome the headaches and really get rid of them and live the rest of their life headache free. Constipation, this is a great way to help flush the bowels, do extra magnesium supplementation. Again, we talked about energy. So if we're just fatigued, overwhelmed emotionally, right? So if we had, you know, a death in the in the family or we lost our job or some sort of major mental emotional stress, then doing extra magnesium supplementation can be so helpful during those periods of times. If we're not if we're struggling to fall asleep or stay asleep, 
definitely doing magnesium supplementation in the during the day and then also in the evenings will really help with that. Um, if we're noticing just really, really tight muscles and cramping on a regular basis, magnesium is my go-to for that. Um, if you've got chronic pain or a syndrome like fibromyalgia, it can really help. Heart arrhythmias, oftentimes related to a poor calcium to magnesium ratio. And so adding in more magnesium will help. Numbness and tingling, definitely not always the cause. Oftentimes this can be B12 deficiency. It could be a pressure on a nerve, right? Physical pressure, like a like a, a spinal bone put put out of pressure, put uh, shifted out of position, putting pressure on the nerve. It could also be diabetes can cause numbness and tingling. But you know what? You're not going to go wrong with trying to do some magnesium and see if it goes away. Okay, and then mood and behavioral issues. So we're talking about things like um, anxiety, depression, bipolar. Those, those syndromes, they're going to improve. They may, may not get them over it altogether, but they're going to improve using magnesium foods and magnesium supplements. So why is magnesium so good? Because it plays a role in more than 300 functions in your body. It helps to balance out your blood sugar. That's going to play a gigantic role in your inflammatory levels as well as your brain. So people with blood sugar dysregulation are going to notice a lot more mood swings, emotional imbalances. They're going to be overwhelmed by stress easier. They're going to be more irritable. So magnesium will really help with that, balancing out the blood but blood sugar. It's also going to help improve circulation and get more oxygen into the body and particularly into the brain. So we know headaches are very much associated with hypoxia, meaning lack of oxygen into different regions of the brain. Magnesium is going to help balance that out. It's key for cellular energy production, really the electrical gradient within every cell. It's key for that. And then also for uh, really just our body's mitochondrial processing uh, and producing energy, but needs magnesium. Helps calm and balance the nervous system. Plays a key role in what we call our glutamate to GABA balance. So glutamate is an excitatory neuro neurotransmitter. It excites us, gives us energy, excites our body. GABA is inhibitory. It helps to relax and calm our body. We need a good balance. Obviously, you know, we need glutamate because we need to be able to process memories. We need to be able to think sharply and quickly. But if it gets out of control and it's out of balance with GABA, then we're going to end up with uh, basically anxiety or irritability or headaches and different things like that. So just overexcitation of the nervous system cells. So we'll get excitotoxicity type reactions in our body. We don't want that. If we have too much GABA, if we don't have enough glutamate, then we're gonna be lackadaisical. We're going to be very slow in our cognitive processing. So it really helps balance out that ratio. Also pain relief, um, it relaxes muscles. Magnesium is real key for muscle tone in general and helping with the electrical gradient of the muscle cells. So real key there um, as well as the nerve system. Bone density and calcium balance. You know, we need magnesium has a critical and an intimate relationship with calcium. So it's really, really key for helping get calcium into the bone uh, tissue where it belongs and out of the bloodstream. So we have good, healthy, strong bones, joints, and ligaments. So magnesium is a relaxing agent. So it helps with uh, tissue elasticity. So, so our joints and ligaments can be more flexible. And, um, and that's, that's obviously key for overall health and well-being, uh, anti-aging characteristics associated with that, less muscle tension and pain relief, right? And then of course, deep sleep patterns, because again, it's going to help balance out that glutamate to GABA ratio. It's going to help with the production of melatonin, which is our major sleep hormone. Um, and so really, really key for all those reasons. And again, I mean, looking at how it plays a role in the body, all these key uh, roles, like, like what's talked about here in this slide, cleanses the bowels, right? If we take a bunch of magnesium, it's going to help to um, stimulate muscle contractions in the gut, which are going to help force out uh, basically feces and um, and some water with that. It's going to help bring more water into the, into the colon, which if we're constipated, that's going to really help get things out. If we're already have diarrhea, this is why we want to back off if we do have diarrhea because of that. Okay, heart contractility. This is huge. So we know that um, basically when people have heart arrhythmias, oftentimes associated with um, a poor calcium to magnesium ratio. So heart needs a lot of magnesium. 
And so if we don't get enough magnesium, then the heart's going to have problems. It can have tachycardia and arrhythmias. So that can be a major issue. And so we know that we should normally have about a one-to-one -one ratio of calcium magnesium within the cell. Most people uh, in society have something like a five to one or 15 to one ratio of calcium to magnesium. So that's going to cause problems. Okay. And it's going to lead to inflammation. It's going to lead to poor cardiovascular function, a number of different issues. So, um, so we definitely want to support your magnesium levels. Okay. And this is one reason why I really don't recommend calcium supplementation in general. I recommend getting enough magnesium, but really you'll get your calcium if you're eating a healthy diet, particularly from green vegetables are great sources of calcium. Also, if you are doing any sort of bone broth or bone broth protein, that's going to be real helpful. Um, if you are doing fish, particularly um, things like sardines, you're going to get a lot of good calcium out of that as well. So you think about that bone tissue, it's going to have calcium. Um, so those are, are great ways to get calcium. In general, if you're eating vegetables, you're going to get cal the, the calcium that your body needs. So if you're not eating vegetables, you may need more calcium. So, um, But if you are, then you should have enough. So three ways to support magnesium levels. Number one, magnesium-rich foods. So we want to eat a magnesium-rich diet. I'm going to go through that. In a second, Epsom salt baths, which is a great way to get more magnesium soaking into your system, and then magnesium supplementation. So what are the best food sources for magnesium? Well, oftentimes they're the best food sources of calcium. They come together. So we talked about green vegetables, Swiss chard, spinach. We could throw kale in there, collard greens. Um, romaine lettuce is even a, you know, a decent source of magnesium and calcium. Those are all good. Grass-fed dairy, right? So particularly grass-fed butter, you're going to get calcium, magnesium in those. Avocados, calcium and magnesium, pumpkin seeds, good healthy pink salts, Himalayan sea salt, nuts, dark chocolate, wild-caught fish like we were talking about, sprouts, sea vegetables like dulce, kelp, nori, um, different different kudzu, right? Different uh, types of seaweeds are really good. And you can get a snack called sea vegetable snack, which, um, or sea snacks, I should say, which tastes good. It's basically seaweed with olive oil and sea salt on it. And it tastes awesome. Um, and, and it's a great source of minerals for the body. And we really need more minerals. Most people are mineral deficient in general. Magnesium is one of many key minerals, but tends to be the one that more people are are deficient in and, and supporting your magnesium levels makes just a huge difference. Coffee is a magnesium source. Now, the caveat with coffee is that caffeine in general will deplete your your uh, magnesium levels. So the more caffeine and stimulants you take, even dark chocolate, the more magnesium your body is going to use, right? It's going to utilize it because it's speeding up your metabolism, your cellular energy production. So if you're doing that, I wouldn't necessarily count that as your magnesium source. You know, include a lot more of these other types of magnesium-rich foods. Um, but nevertheless, those are those can be very healthy foods. Dark chocolate, organic dark chocolate, organic coffee can be very nutrient-dense foods, in particular because of the polyphenols that are in those that are very good for our gut, good for our ability to adapt to oxidative stress. So consume more of those foods. Epsom salt baths are awesome. So, and more or less, you want to take about a cup of Epsom salts per 100 pounds of body weight, put it in water. So if you're 200 pounds, you put two cups in, put it in your bathtub. Okay. And then I also recommend doing some good essential oils like lavender, chamomile, stuff that smells good, that has um, beneficial, be beneficial effects on your body. Diffuse that, put that in the bathtub and soak in that. It's really good if you're trying to overcome muscle soreness or pain. Epsom salt baths are awesome for that. But also if you're trying to relax to get ready for a great sleep, like if you're struggling with insomnia or you just don't feel like you're getting the highest quality sleep, doing an Epsom salt bath before bed. I'll tell my clients to do a a uh, curfew, an electronic curfew at 9 p.m. where they come off of all electronics. They go ahead, they fill up their bathtub, they dim the lights, they put in the Epsom salt baths, they, the Epsom salts, they uh, put in essential oils, they diffuse essential oils, so they're breathing those in. And um, they'll put on some light music, classical or worship music, and just relax, chill in the bathtub. Allow those Epsom salts to get in. The Epsom salts have magnesium and sulfates. Sulfates are key for detoxification and helping the body to buffer oxidative stress. And magnesium, of course, 
we just went through all the benefits of magnesium. So we're going to get that seeping into our system as well. So this is probably the lowest cost way of supporting your magnesium levels is doing daily Epsom salt baths. Um, you know, if you're not able to get your whole body in, you can even just do a foot bath and you'll get some of the benefits. So, you know, if you're really um, struggling financially, Epsom salts, I mean, you can get these things for just a few dollars and it'll last you a while. Big, big bag of Epsom salts, put it in your bathtub and start doing Epsom salt baths. Um, be really helpful before bed. Okay. And really, as far as how long to be in Epsom salt baths, a common question I get, roughly about 30 minutes will give you uh, the benefits um, for the overall amount of time. So 30 minutes will be enough to get the magnesium and sulfates into your system, help your body detoxify, buffer oxidative stress, get that good, strong, healthy magnesium into your body. Okay. So finally, magnesium supplementation. We have a number of different supplements on our website, drjockers.com with magnesium. Um, two of them that are very popular are our transdermal form. So we have a, um, we have an oil, magnesium oil with MSM. That's really good for pain. So if you're dealing with pain in different areas of your body, you can basically spray this magnesium with MSM oil on those areas, rub it in really, really good, and will help reduce the pain. And it crosses into your bloodstream transdermally through the skin. And again, it's got MSM, which is basically a really, really good anti-inflammatory that gets in there with it. Okay, we also have a magnesium with melatonin. Uh, and this is a cream. And this one you would basically spray and put on the bottoms of your feet and on your arms before you go to bed, roughly about 30 minutes or so before you go to bed. Helps support ideal melatonin levels and helps you relax. Now, my favorite of all the supplements that we have, though, is the Brain Calm Magnesium. This is a powder, liquid, basically put it in water, and it comes out, tastes like a like fruit punch basically it tastes great flavored with stevia so all natural sweetener and a really really powerful for improving brain function this is my top high performance supplement really crosses the blood brain barrier helps you with executive function so thinking sharply clearly making really good decisions helping support memory so you're able to really have good retention and uh, you know it's my go-to i use a lot of this supplement throughout the day to think sharply and quickly to have really good memory and retention and uh, just to support support an overall high performance lifestyle so again you can find that at drjockers.com it's our brain calm magnesium and hey if you're listening to this video and you want to get some of these products go ahead and use our coupon code jockers 10 j-o-c-k-e-r-s 10 it's capital j O-C-K-E-R-S-10 on our product store and um, you'll get 10% off your order and all of our um, orders within the United States, it's free shipping over $49. So if you want to get some stuff, get over $49 and you'll get free shipping on your order. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's presentation. We went through a lot on magnesium and just to finish up, really using magnesium particularly to help relax the body and help overcome insomnia and anxiety. You know, I find this to be just so powerful for people. So here's a little um, protocol using four to 600 milligrams of magnesium, three and eight malate or glycinate at night. The brain calm magnesium has magnesium of three and eight, okay, which is again, the kind that crosses the blood and brain barrier. And I'll actually go up to one gram. One gram I, see, I seem to find awesome results with. So getting, doing that one gram to help relieve that uh, insomnia be so effective and really helps um, decrease the amount of time it takes for you to fall asleep and helps increase the amount of high quality sleep that you have in your, that you have uh, on a typical nightly basis. So hope that was helpful guys. And we'll be, we will be back on a future YouTube training. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.